Hi, this is Charlie Zeese with Only PVC Pyramids. This talk today is going to be about uh, the sacred geometry of Russian pyramids. I gave a talk about this a couple of weeks ago at the Conscious Life Expo in Los Angeles. And at that time, I, I gave out to the public the, for the first time some new information on a fourth dimension geometry that I've discovered about the Russian pyramids. That time frame that I had for speaking, however, was not long enough to go into the detail that I'd like to, and I wanted all of my YouTube video uh, subscribers and viewers to be able to see this information as well. So we're doing this expanded version of the uh, talk uh, for you today. To start the uh, discussion, I'd like to quote Dr. Alexander Golod, who's the director of the Russian Pyramid Research Program in Russia. And this uh, quotation helps to frame the rest of uh, our conversations today. Dr. Golod states, in my opinion, the main problem in the study of pyramids is that many tend to see in the results of the research the elements of mysticism and shamanism. However, scientists with intuition understand that what we are dealing with is a new physics and a new biology. Before we begin, I'd like to tell you how I became a pyramid geek. Like many of you, I got hooked on Russian pyramids after watching uh, David Wilcox's uh, Russian pyramid research uh, lectures that were on Gaia TV on his wisdom teachings. But uh, I decided after seeing that that I wanted to make these pyramids on, on my own if there wasn't anyone else out there doing that. And I checked around and I couldn't find anyone who was making these pyramids, so I decided to do this on my own. But the first step in the process was to figure out exactly what the geometry of these Russian pyramids was so that I could uh, uh, make the, the pyramid as precisely and accurately as possible. But what I found was that there was a diversity of opinion among all of the prominent pyramid researchers about the uh, geometry of the Russian pyramid, and quite honestly, none of those opinions seem to agree with the original research that I found on Dr. Golod's website. So trying to make sense of all of this is really how I got on the road to discovering what I believe is the sacred geometry of Russian pyramids, and that turns out to be more profound than I could have ever imagined. So today's lecture is going to be uh, kind of a, a discovery of how all of this uh, came to be. The thesis of today's uh, presentation is as follows. Pyramid function is based upon science, and I think that's the most important concept uh, that I can impart to, the, to you today. It's not based upon mysticism or woo-woo. Uh, and pyramid geometry of many elements is perhaps the most significant variable in a pyramid's shape power. Uh, researchers have developed, as I said, differing opinions on the geometry of Russian pyramids, but none of it seems to have been corroborated by the information that I found recently on Dr. Golod's pyramid website, pyramids.ru. And all of this has resulted in a tremendous amount of confusion about the actual geometry of these pyramids. Now what we're going to be talking about today, while Giza, Nubian, and Golden Pyramid geometries contain three-dimensional phi relationships, I'll be demonstrating my belief that based upon the website information on Dr. Golod's website, that Russian Pyramid geometry is actually based upon the phi spiral, which incorporates the fourth dimension of space-time. Torsion field research demonstrates that torsion waves move in spirals and that pyramids incorporating the phi spiral are the most important passive torsion generators. And finally, this phi spiral geometry happens to also be the exact geometry found in the phi scaling angle seen throughout all aspects of creation and as revealed in nature through the study of cosmometry. So what are Russian pyramids? Here we have some pictures from uh, 
uh, the RU website is uh, both exterior and interior of the large pyramid, 44 meters tall, that's about 146 feet tall, uh, that was uh, built outside of Moscow, along with a picture of Dr. Alexander Golan, the director of this program. Russian pyramids are the most thoroughly and scientifically researched pyramid geometry on the planet. Moscow scientist and defense engineer Dr. Alexander Golod began building these pyramids within Russia and the Ukraine around 1990. Construction and research was undertaken at the request of the Russian government, and the research was performed by teams of Russia's top military, medical, engineering, agricultural, and material scientists. And here are two key points for uh, today's discussion. All Russian pyramids are built with non-metallic materials such as PVC pipe, and that's exactly where we got our name from, only PVC pyramids. As the research indicates from the Russians that any metal in the pyramid structure causes the effects of the pyramid to be greatly reduced. And finally, for this purpose today, the most important point, according to available reference articles, as well as Dr. Golod's website, Russian pyramids are built with a ratio of height to base length of 2.02 .02 to 1. And that's going to be important as we move through a lot of uh, geek speak and geometry here, but um, you, as you're going to see, this is a, a small but a significant variance from what the researchers who have looked at these pyramids in the past had thought to be the geometry of these pyramids. This is the only available source information uh, regarding the geometry of the, the pyramids that was available to me when I first started uh, doing research to figure out the geometry of these pyramids. This was an article that was referenced by David Wilcock in his Wisdom Teaching series, and it's by uh, one of the team that Dr. Golod assembled. Uh, his name is Vladimir Krasnoholovitz from the Ukraine. Now, it's hard to see on this page but I've taken from that page the important information about the geometry of the pyramids, and you'll see that that quotation reads as follows. Uh, ratio of height h to the side a of a foundation is equal to 2.02. .02. So this was the only uh, source information when I began to look at the research that was available to me. And on the next page here, you'll see what I've done is to uh, graph this in GeoGebra, uh, which is a, uh, a graphing website available to the public on, uh, the, on uh, the Internet. A height to base length ratio of 2.02 .02 results in what's called an edge height, which uh, extends from point C at the top down to point A or point B, and that's 2.08. And for our purposes right now, the important number to remember is the slant angle. The slant angle is what's commonly used to reference uh, the slope of uh, pyramids uh, in the common parlance. So remember 76.11 degrees. Now this page shows a depiction of the major pyramid geometries that we'll be discussing today. And as you see, the Giza Pyramid on the top left has a much uh, lower uh, angle to it at a 51.82 degree uh, slant angle. That's also known for many of you as the famous 51-51-51 when you uh, discuss this in terms of uh, minutes and seconds. The next uh, important geometry is the Golden uh, Pyramid geometry. Here, uh, the slant angles uh, at the bottom are 76 degrees exactly, and 36 degrees is the apex angle. The Nubian Pyramid comes in at 72.8 degrees height, uh, excuse me, slant angle. And finally, on the bottom right, you'll see the Russian Pyramid, which has an exterior slant angle of 76.1 degrees. Now, in the middle, uh, I, want, I found a picture uh, that we've never used on the website before, but it was done at precisely the angle 
uh, of this as this picture from uh, from the uh, pyramid outside of Moscow. So I wanted you to see that our pyramids today, uh, or at least uh, based upon this old uh, 76.1 degree angle, were spot on with the uh, with the geometry of the pyramid that's available, and you can see visually matches it exactly uh, from outside Moscow. And if you'll notice as well, yeah, and you'll see this even more on the on the next page, is slightly larger at the base. Uh, but there is a perceptible difference when you put them together side by side. Now what is the golden ratio? The golden ratio is a, a ratio that's found throughout nature and is known as a scaling uh, ratio. Uh, we'll be discussing this throughout uh, the uh, talk today. But the ratio and the number itself is determined, if you look at the graph at the top, by looking at A plus B is to A as A is to B. So in other words, you, each time you make something bigger uh, by this number, uh, it bears the same relationship as it did to the smaller components. And in uh, mathematical terms, that relationship is 1.618, and you see it continues on and on. Uh, it's, it's an irrational, con, uh, infinite uh, uh, function, uh, and so it's an irrational number, but that number is now today known as phi. And all major pyramid types, the Giza, Nubian, and Golden, have at least what I am calling a one three-dimensional phi ratio element in their geometry. And we're going to discuss that very briefly here. The first is the Giza pyramid geometry. Uh, if you look at the bottom of the page, you'll see that uh, it has a base length of 1 and a height of 1.27, which is actually the square root of phi, and the edge length, again, which goes from point C to point A in this example, uh, is a length of 1.618, or phi itself. So we see that there's a relationship of phi both in the height and the edge length as it relates to the base length of the Giza pyramid. The Golden Pyramid, again, has a, a slant angle of 72 degrees. Uh, it has, in this case, we're uh, using a base length of 2, a height of 3.078, and an edge height of 3.236. Well, when you look at the ratio of edge length to base length in this example, we once again come up with 1.618 or phi. So again, for the golden pyramid, that phi relationship is found in the ratio of the edge length to the base length of the pyramid. And then moving on to the Nubian pyramid, which has a slant angle just slightly greater than the golden at 72.828 degrees, when we have a base length of 2, we have a height of 3.236 and an edge height of 3.387. And in this case, when we take a ratio of the height to the base length, we find the same phi relationship of 1.618. So again, the golden ratio has an edge length to base length ratio of phi, whereas the Nubian pyramid has a ratio of height to base length of phi. So when we look at the summary of these pyramid geometries, we see the Giza pyramid at the top, very easily discernible from the other three because of its lower slant angle. And at the bottom we see the Golden, the Nubian, and the Russian geometry pyramids. Again, those three slant angles, 72, 72.828, and 76.1 degrees, uh, you can see juxtaposed next to each other that uh, although it's difficult to discern, there is a noticeable difference in the slant angle and therefore the, the steepness of the pyramids in each of these three cases. But confusion abounds uh, throughout uh, the pyramid world as to what the exact geometry is, and so I get this question quite often. Is this a Nubian golden Russian pyramid that I'm selling? And, uh, you know, I have to respond 
with some consternation because I have to tell people and give them the story that I'm giving you today that there really is no such thing as a Russian Nubian Golden Pyramid. Uh, it's just due to the confusion not only by researchers but also by manufacturers of these pyramids that's caused the tremendous amount of confusion. And unfortunately it's very difficult as a result for the consumer to know what geometry they're actually getting when they go to purchase a Russian pyramid these days. Now how did this confusion arise? Well, back to my dilemma, you know, when I started I wasn't sure exactly what the geometry was and this page helps to summarize uh, the confusion and the, and the uh, problem that I had initially in making that same de decision and, and judgment as to what the geometry really was. There are four major researchers, and maybe more, that have looked at the geometry of Russian pyramids over the years. And you can see Patrick Flanagan thought that they were the Golden Pyramid with a 72 degree slant angle. Nick Edwards, the Pyramid Man, thought that they were Nubian and thought that they had a 72.8 degree slant angle. David Wilcock, uh, in his wisdom teaching, said that the uh, angle was about 72 degrees which would make it close to the Golden uh, Pyramid. And John DeSalvo, in his book, The Complete uh, Pyramid Source Handbook, said that it was about 73 degrees, uh, very possibly the Nubian geometry. But with that uh, lack of consistency, we then look at the information that we gleaned from the uh, article on GizaPyramid.com from Krasnoholovitz, where we determined that the slant angle was 76.1, as we saw on one of the previous slides. So what is the right answer? This was the question that I had to answer. So I had to proceed in a cautious fashion and what I decided to do to help me make that decision was to actually have a CAD designer make designs for me for connectors for the golden uh, geometry at 72 degrees, the Nubian at 72.8, as well as the 76.1 degree uh, slant angle that was in the Krasna Hall of its article on GizaPyramid.com. And after the CAD designer made those designs for me, I actually had 3D pieces printed uh, for all three geometries and proceeded to make pyramids based upon uh, the specific geometries of those pyramid types. But when I built them, I noticed that the golden and the Nubian geometries just clearly were not visually correct when I compared them to the actual photographs. And if you remember back earlier, I showed you a picture of our pyramid uh, overlaid next to the uh, one in Russia. And you can see why I decided to go ahead and stick with the 76.1 degree angle because even though it wasn't coming directly from Dr. Golod, it was coming from one of his staff, uh, team members, and it was obviously the most visibly accurate. So that's what we decided to use. Until about four months ago, when I discovered the ultimate source for this information, which is Dr. Golod's website. I'm going to tell you that after a year and a half of research, I had not been able to find his website and it is very difficult to find with a traditional uh, search engine in the United States. So uh, for those of you who have not uh, been able to find this before, you're not alone. It took me an awfully long time to do that. But the website definitively confirmed the Russian pyramid exterior geometry of 2.02 to 1. And here's a quote from the website which states that the height of the uncut pyramid to the base side is 2.02 to 1. Now to clarify what they mean by an uncut pyramid, uh, if you look at the picture on the left, it's very hard to ascertain this, but I did a blow up of that photo uh, of, of, of this uh, picture on the right, and you can see that there's no capstone on the tops of the pyramids that are built in Russia. And therefore, the purpose of, the, of that statement is that the uncut pyramid uh, uh, would be a theoretical pyramid that would go up to the top, uh, to, a, to a tip or a point uh, above the top of the pyramids uh, where there's no capstone. 
We're going to go over briefly, for those of you who are un unfamiliar, some of the uh, research that's been done on the Russian pyramids. And when you see this research, you're going to see why it's so important to uh, discern the geometry of this pyramid properly, because there is a tremendous amount of just mind-boggling research that the Russians have done. I have summarized this in a 20-part series on my YouTube channel, uh, and please feel free to go watch that at your leisure. Uh, it's called The Summary of the Russian Pyramid Research. We'll go over some of this briefly. Um, some of the things in the area of health that uh, have been well documented include uh, that the pyramid promotes heightened immunity, it increases blood platelet count, it improves the rate of healing, it improves and regulates thyroid function, reduces stress, lowers violent behavior, reduces cancer, reduces incidence in, of infectious diseases, it improves lymphocyte proliferation and longevity, it reduces dramatically, uh, dramatic antiviral effects, it reduces tumor growth, it virtually eliminated infant, infant mortality in premature at-risk births, which is an amazing uh, study in and of itself. And finally, in, in animals, it's been proven to improve athletic endurance by up to 300%. And to show a little bit about the health research, these are pictures of me uh, two years ago before I put the pyramid uh, into my bedroom. And as you can tell, it's had a dramatic impact impact on my physical well-being. I've lost almost 100 pounds since uh, putting that pyramid into my bedroom. In terms of agricultural research, uh, the Russians found that just storing the seeds inside a Russian geometry pyramid before planting improved the yields by 20 to 100 percent. And this was done with numerous types of crops over thousands of acres. Constructing a Russian pyramid directly into a wheat field actually increased crop yields by 400%. Also, seeds stored in a Russian geometry pyramid virtually eliminated the need for pesticides, and seeds stored in the pyramid were resistant to drought. In the environmental sector, uh, the research indicates that uh, pyramids purify contaminated water, they remove radioactivity from the air and the water. Uh, they can create new streams, something that we have experienced personally on our property since putting pyramids uh, outside near the stream bed of what used to be a seasonal stream on our property that now runs all the time. It has regenerated extinct plant species. Again, in, in this case, a demonstrating that there is a multi-dimensional aspect uh, to the operation of these pyramids. It creates far-reaching energy fields extending uh, for huge distances uh, around the pyramid, especially those large ones that have been built in Russia. It diminishes earthquakes and severe weather. It dramatically reduces airborne toxicity and poisoning, and it repairs the ozone layer. In terms of materials research, uh, pyramid exposure changes the structure of steel. Uh, pyrocarbons exposed to the pyramid experience dramatic increases in, re in electrical resistance, and semiconductors experience a dramatic decrease in electrical resistance. Rocks placed under a pyramid distribute electrical charges more evenly. Water inside of a pyramid does not freeze even down as low as 38 degrees below, uh, minus 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Capacitors placed at the top of a pyramid will instantaneously charge, and according to the literature in the research, were seen to literally blow off and fly into the air from the top of the pyramid. And uh, oil production uh, has increased in some of the older oil fields where pyramids were placed uh, on top of or nearby the uh, older oil wells, and it increased production from those wells by as much as 30 percent. So to understand how these um, amazing effects could actually take place, 
requires a certain amount of understanding of the fundamentals of pyramid science. And three of the heroes that we're going to be talking about today, two are Russian and one American, include Nikolai Kozarev, Dan A. Davidson, and Anatoly Akimov. Now I'm doing a, a, a series on my YouTube page called The Fundamentals of Pyramid Science, and the purpose of this is to really try to get pyramid uh, information out to the public that's based upon science and to prove to the layperson uh, in non-technical ways that uh, there is uh, a true uh, scientific basis for the Russian research that we've just uh, discussed in brief. The six core elements that we talk about in this series include the existence of the ether, the existence of torsion waves, the ability of objects including pyramids to act as passive torsion generators, and the significance of five spirals and the five scaling angle in the creator process. Now we're going to be talking about those first four in today's uh, video. We're going to leave the uh, last two uh, to be discussed at a later time. First to talk about the existence of the ether. Uh, the word ether means shine in Greek and the fundamental reality of such an unseen fluid-like source of universal energy has long been a hallmark of the world's secret mystery schools. Pythagoras and Plato discussed it at great length, as did the Vedic scriptures of ancient India, referring to it by names such as prana and akasha. And all matter is simply a special case of the all-pervading universal energy filling this space, namely the ether. And important for today's discussion, the ether is a medium which can be intensified and manipulated into any force or manifestation by the use of materials, shapes, and other forces, including thought. Now Nikolai Kozarev, who is in my view the most important scientist that no one's heard about in the West, uh, is perhaps the most important scientist in my view of the 20th century because of his pioneering work in torsion field research. And according to Dr. Kozarev, uh, spirals underlie the structure of plants, animals, people, solar systems, and the entire universe, and these growth patterns following the spiraling form known as the phi spiral. All life forms are drawing off this unknown spiraling source of energy. And as part of his classic research, Kozarev found that just simply shaking an object uh, up and down uh, on a rubber band, for example, would cause its weight to increase. And that weight increase and the subsequent decrease in weight when it was brought back to rest, those increases and decreases did not occur steadily, but occurred rather in sudden bursts uh, known as effect quantization. And what this hints at is that there is a multi-dimensional universe at work here in the creative process. And finally, Kozarev found that thoughts create torsion waves, and thoughts with emotion are even stronger torsion wave generators. And the way that he found this out, he noticed that when he would read a book and think about a particular topic, that his uh, detector would move, uh, noting the existence of torsion waves. But when he would read, apparently, what is his favorite book, which was Faust, and he would get emotional about the, what he was reading, that those uh, waves were even more powerful than when he was thinking thoughts that he didn't have an emotional attachment to. So, uh, for all of you uh, meditators and, and manifestors out there, this does prove from Kozarev's research that metaphysics is real and that there's good science to back it up. Now, cracking the code on uh, pyramid sacred geometry was an issue, uh, and we're going to come back to it now. Since there was no unanimity uh, among the researchers, I said to myself, at least we know now the uh, geometry and can be certain about the exterior geometry from Dr. Golod's website. 
But we still had the question remaining, what is the sacred geometry of Russian pyramids? And I put my thinking cap on to try to figure that out. Well, I didn't really use the one before, but I did use this one. And I meditated on this topic quite a bit. And what I kept hearing back was that I needed to continue to read the research. So we're back to the research now, and we're going to look at the research of Dan A. Davidson, an American who was a pioneer and a giant in uh, uh, pyramid research and wrote a book about 25 years ago called Shape Power, which is a classic uh, in this field. And to quote uh, Dan Davidson, one of the observations which many researchers have found is that ether prefers to move in circular arcs or spiral patterns. Dr. Wilhelm Reich found that orgone, his name for the ether, moves in spiral patterns, and its constant motion is that of spirals. Victor Schauberger, in his groundbreaking research on diamagnetic energy, his term for the ether, also discovered that the diamagnetic energy moved in spiral and vortical patterns. Now, if we apply this observation of the ether moving naturally in spiral and vortical patterns to shape power effects, then it is reasonable to infer that the use of curved or spiral pathways to mold and guide the ether will enhance the effects. And now on to the fundamentals uh, research of Anatoly Akimov. This is perhaps the most important research that's been done on uh, the uh, shape power effects of pyramids and cones. And Anatoly Akimov and his team in Russia conducted research into passive torsion generators and published their research in 1991. They were particularly interested in studying the effects that cones of different sizes would have upon various processes. Now, in this context, a cone can be considered to be nothing more than a pyramid that has an infinite number of sides, so it's quite relevant to our discussion today of pyramid geometry. Now, as an interesting aside, I have the source material, uh, the volume and, and the title of the article, and I went to my local library here in the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania area to try to find this uh, and get the source material for this speech about two months ago. And I found out that uh, from the uh, research librarians that uh, not only did the Library of Congress, but another source in the United States both indicated that they had the, uh, the article on hand and uh, one of them would be sending it to me uh, forthwith. However, two months later, before I began to uh, head off to California, uh, I was informed that suddenly neither of these two sources could find the article that uh, I wanted so desperately to have for this discussion and wished I had today. However, uh, I am going to be getting that article uh, from a source in Europe, and as soon as I've received it, I'll probably be doing a separate video on this topic of the important research of Anatoly Akimov. But uh, we do have a summary of that information from David Wilcox's Divine Cosmos, and I'll quote from that uh, at this time. From the research of Dr. Akimov, it was determined that the best passive torsion generators were formed by cones that were shaped into the phi ratio. Now, according to David, what this tells us is that torsion waves are indeed fire spirals, as we've seen, but since a cone which duplicates this pattern will harness the waves most strongly. Now, that was an interesting turn of the phrase from my perspective, and that's really what caused the aha moment for me. Learning that cones shaped as phi spirals were the most efficient passive torsion generators sent me in the direction of a fourth dimension phi relationship. So what I said to myself was, wouldn't stacking a series of spheres on top of each other whose diameters decreased by phi simulate the path of the phi spiral and what would be the geometry of a pyramid built around this series of stacked spheres? 
Well, I went back to GeoGebra to uh, uh, do this work, and what I came up with is the following diagram. You'll see a series of circles. This is done in two dimensions. Uh, whose diameters uh, decrease by phi as we go upwards. In the first circle on the bottom, you'll see that the length Li, which is the diameter of the bottom pyramid, uh, bottom circle, is a, a diameter of 1. Now the second pyramid up uh, has a diameter A1B1 of 0.618, which is determined by dividing 1, the diameter of the bottom pyramid, by 1.618, which gets you the new diameter of 0 0.618. Once again, we divide uh, by 1.618 to get the next diameter of 0 0.382, 0 0.236, and so forth going up. I did about 12 uh, to 15 of these circles. I couldn't keep doing it because this would go on for infinity, but that gave me a sufficient reliability uh, to be able to draw with a great deal of precision uh, the uh, pyramid, or the triangle in this case, around uh, that series of stacked spheres. And what we come up with when we do that is uh, we find phi everywhere in this, uh, in this geometry. For a given diameter bottom sphere of 1, we have a height of the pyramid of 2.618, which is phi squared, and we have a base length of 1.272, which is the square root of phi. Uh, we also have an edge length of 2.694, a height to base length of 2.058, and an edge height to base length of 2.118. Now taking that from a two-dimension to a three-dimensional pyramid, uh, what would that look like? Well, we've redesigned uh, our logo to depict the geometry that results uh, from this new discovery. So we have taken a series of stacked spheres and we've drawn a hypothetical five spiral circling around those pyramids, uh, around those spheres, and built the pyramid around it accordingly. Now to reconcile, um, was this, is this the, the real geometry? We need to, to do several things, and not the least of which is to reconcile the exterior slant angle that we originally determined from the website of 76.11 degrees with the new uh, slant angle of 76.345 degrees. And as you can see, it's very, very close. It's only a uh, uh, little over two-tenths of a degree difference. But in order to satisfy myself, that we were actually on to the right uh, concept in, geom uh, in this geometry, I went through some calculations that we're going to go over now. And reconciling the slant angle difference is really fairly simple once you understand the difference between theoretical and practical uh, geometry. Geometry itself is a theoretical construct that assumes that all points, lines, etc. have no height depth, or width. But when we take theoretical geometry into the real world of construction, we've got to compensate for the fact that the building materials that we're using to construct this pyramid actually do have height, width, and depth in order for them to, uh, uh, to hold up the pyramid uh, itself. And even the pyramid in Giza itself, the dimensions are not perfectly accurate. Uh, because of the very same reasons uh, that we're talking about today. Uh, so, to reconcile further, we've been talking about the exterior slant angle of 76.1 degrees, which I'm calling here the, it's really the estimated interior slant angle derived by dividing the height and base length and then determining the angle based on these exterior proportions. But the interior slant angle, and to use my hands here, you're going to, the exterior is a little wider, but we're going to fit that interior angle with a slightly uh, tighter uh, and, and steeper slope angle, uh, slant angle inside. That's the actual interior slant angle obtained by 
taking into account the width and depth and scaling of the walls comprising the structure. So the key here is, was to see uh, what the wall thickness would need to be on a pyramid uh, to arrive at the 76.345 degree interior slant angle from the 76.1 degree exterior slant angle that we had from the website. So here's basically what I did to make that calculation. Um, if you look at the diagram, the exterior slant angle, which is shown over on the left side as angle D, uh, is 76.11 degrees. Uh, the interior slant angle, which is shown as angle C, is uh, 76.345, and that's going to be the angle on the inside of the pyramid after you take into account uh, the walls that are holding up the pyramid itself. So the question that we needed to ask was, how thick would the walls need to be at the base of a 146 foot, roughly 44 meter pyramid to arrive at that 76.345 degree interior slant angle? Well, the answer turns out to be about 9 inches, which is an extremely reasonable response when you consider that these pyramids in Russia were being built with series of PVC pipe, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 6 to 8 inches uh, at, at, their, at the base, uh, covered with a layer of 1 to 2 inches of fiberglass, making a total wall thickness of about 9 inches. So a perfectly reasonable result uh, uh, coming from this analysis, which confirms, in my view, uh, the rational uh, belief that this slant angle is, in fact, that uh, which was used by Dr. Golod. And we also have to take into consideration here that the research that was done by Dr. Golod uh, corresponds in time with the commencement of the construction of these pyramids in Russia, so I don't think that it's a coincidence, a uh, mere coincidence, that um, uh, these geometries match up. Now when we did this, uh, further demonstration of the, uh, this geometry was done by actually testing the energy differences between the old and the new geometry of these pyramids. And we have done this research. My significant other who's there holding the, uh, the Lecker antenna uh, we've done a video demonstrating the enormous energy difference between uh, these two geometries. Although it's only two-tenths of a degree, uh, the video demonstrates, as well as uh, the hundreds of people who sat under the old geometry and the new geometry pyramids that we had on display at Conscious Life Expo, uh, all universally confirm that the uh, the energy field that's produced by this new geometry is far stronger than that from the old geometry. Now to talk briefly about some of the interesting correlations between the Giza and the Russian pyramid geometry. A lot of people ask me, well, how does this relate to the Giza pyramid? Because people are familiar with it. But once I did research uh, at, that I'll show you here in a minute, I found some fascinating similarities between the geometry of these two pyramids. So again, in the GeoGebra uh, chart that we have on the left side of the page, what I've done is to draw with a, uh, for the same uh, base length uh, a Giza and a Russian uh, geometry pyramid uh, onto the same page so that it's easy to visualize. And you can see how much steeper the Russian geometry is at first glance versus the Giza. But let's look at three important ratios that we found when we did this comparison. Uh, in this example where we have a base length of two, uh, we have a height of the Russian pyramid as 4.116, which is, again is twice the 2.058 that was the ratio of height to base length. The height of the Giza pyramid, uh, as from before, is 1.72 or the square root of phi. And when we do a ratio between those two, we find that that height ratio is actually 3.236 or 2 times phi. 
Again, another fascinating phi relationship. And when we do the same calculation for the edge height of the Russian Giza pyramid or the Russian pyramid and the Giza pyramid, we find that that edge height ratio is 2.618 or phi squared. Another significant phi relationship between the two geometries. And last but not least, uh, when we look at the slant angle of the Russian pyramid at 76.345 degrees, it matches to the third decimal point the apex angle of the Giza pyramid. I truly cannot believe that these are pure coincidences and accidents. I am not totally sure why all of this uh, has happened the way it does, but all I am doing at this point is rediscovering uh, research that's been done in Russia, and uh, it, I don't think it's an accident that these geometries fit so closely together, not only in terms of the angles that are used, but in the phi relationships between their geometry. Now many people ask me uh, again about the Russia versus the, um, the Giza pyramids and which one should be used uh, for personal uh, use for health and uh, uh, other personal benefits. And I, I try to refer people to this statement by Dr. Golod, which I think is very, very important. Uh, we have chosen, meaning his team, the optimal form and rules of construction for the Russian geometry pyramid, which are the most favorable for man and nature. Now, the Egyptian pyramids, on the other hand, according to Dr. Golod, those pyramids had their own goals, which can only be guessed at. And I think that that's a fair statement. There are as many opinions about the, the original purpose of the, the Giza pyramids uh, as there probably are researchers uh, looking at the topic. But Dr. Golod is making what I feel is a very critical point here. They chose the geometry and the building materials for the Russian pyramid that their research indicated were the optimal for mankind and for nature. And now moving into the final part of our discussion, I want to tie uh, the information that we've uh, shown today to a topic in an area of study that I only recently became familiar with, which is the study of cosmometry. Now cosmometry uh, is a fairly new uh, field of study. Uh, the term itself has only been in common parlance in the English language for a couple hundred years, but the cosmometry.net website that this information is going to be coming from that I'm going to be giving you here in a minute uh, has this discussion as to uh, what cosmometry really is. Cosmometry is an emerging field of knowledge and application that is the synthesis of millennia of observation, study, theory, and direct experience, scientifically and metaphysically, of the fundamental patterns, structures, processes, and principles of universal creation. Be it through thought, or through physics, music, bioenergetics, visionary art, shamanic journeys, a unified understanding of cosmic coherence is arising in consciousness at a new level of integration and wholeness. Now this website is the uh, uh, product of a gentleman named Marshall Lefferts. Marshall, uh, for those of you who are familiar with Nassim Haramein, uh, has, uh, is presently the president of Nassim's Residence Project Foundation Board. Uh, he also was the associate producer of the Thrive documentary from about 10 years ago where I first learned about Nassim and the concept of the Taurus. Uh, he's also a member of the faculty of the Residence Academy and moving further down in his biography you can see that he was also a consulting producer for the Buckminster Fuller Institute which I would imagine is where he got a great understanding of platonic solids uh, and scaling ratios and their importance in the creative process in the universe. Now Marshall is finalizing a groundbreaking new book on this topic which is going to be out in the next 30 to 60 days. This is being taped in uh, March of 2019. 
So depending on when you uh, see this, uh, this book may be out already, but it's going to be called Cosmometry, Exploring the Holofractal Nature of the Cosmos. And I can't wait to get my hands on the book because I know uh, from the research that's on the website that it's going to tie in so beautifully with the information that I have determined to be the geometry of the Russian pyramids. So according to the website, uh, phi spirals, given how common they are, the phi ratio seems to be the most fundamental scaling ratio in the manifest universe. It appears that nature has an innate tendency to scale biological growth, spiral arcs, atomic and galactic structures, and all manner of structural and flow forms upon the phi ratio due to its optimal efficiency for exactly this need, scaling from the micro to the macro as harmoniously and seamlessly as possible. This indicates that the cosmic space-time field itself is inherently based upon this ratio as pertains to the manifest universe. Whether expressed as a spiral, a structural proportion, an angle, or a quantity, the same ratio is at play throughout. Now I've taken a couple of the pictures of phi spirals from the cosmometry website to show you examples of phi spirals in nature. And here's a picture of phi spirals uh, in our galaxy. And here's one of a phi spiral in a hurricane context. So the phi spiral uh, is everywhere in nature, but the most important information for our discussion today from this website comes from the information provided on the phi scaling angle. Now phi is the angle of expansion or scaling angle that is inherent in phi, phi fractal scaling, where a set of circles, this is going to start to sound familiar here, or spheres, the most symmetrically balanced form in nature, with diameters expanding, we decline them, by Fibonacci values or phi, are placed tangential to one another in a straight line. The angle between the horizontal line at the bottom of each circle and the line that touches each circle's upper surface point is the phi scaling angle. And this angle, according to Marshall in his uh, website, is approximately 27 and a half degrees. Now I'm going to show you the picture of what he did here in a minute, but when I first read this I said, wait a minute, this is sounding exactly like what I just finished uh, figuring out with the Russian geometry pyramids. And I said, this angle isn't approximately 27.5 degrees, it's 27.309, which is exactly the, the angle that uh, we get from the 76.345 uh, slant angle at the bottom. The resulting apex angle is 27.309. So I had to get in touch with Marshall, and I emailed him on his website, and Marshall was nice enough to get back to me. Uh, we started some discussions together, and in those discussions with Marshall, he did confirm that the approximate 27.5 degree angle that he had talked about in, on his website was indeed 27.309 degrees, precisely what we had calculated for the apex angle of the Russian phi spiral pyramid. So here's a, a picture of the way he depicted it. And now it makes a little bit more sense. He essentially has the pyramid on its side to do his mathematics. And if you look over on the right side of the page, you'll see a 27 and a half degree uh, <coughs> number that there. Uh, on all the pages that follow, that's 27.309 to be precise. And it equals the apex angle of the Russian geometry pyramid. So let's look at some of the examples of phi scaling in nature that use this precise geometry uh, for the phi scaling angle in nature. We're going to see uh, sc the scaling angle in the growth of trees. We see it in the flight of birds, interestingly enough. We see it in the grains of sand. This is a picture of grains of sand at low tide after the tide has gone out. And you can see that this very precise angle uh, exists uh, in the grains of sand at low tide. We can see it in the bark of trees. 
uh, where uh, the growth angle can be mapped out and uh, proven to be, again, this exact geometry. And another example here is in a, a, a seashell, uh, which exhibits a very, very close approximation to the phi scaling angle in its growth. So with those examples in mind, I wanted to use as a way to visually uh, wrap up this presentation uh, a depiction that I put together. For those of you familiar with Nassim's work and, and the, the new theories in quantum physics, you know that from the galactic down to the subatomic, the torus is really the, the, the new uh, preferred uh, conception of the creative process. And so what I did was to take a torus uh, picture that I found on the internet. I didn't pick this one by uh, any means other than picking the first one that I found. But what I found fascinating was that when I interposed my phi geometry uh, pyramid uh, into the torus, it matches virtually perfectly uh, with the, the hole in the donut uh, leading up to the the torus point or the vortex point, which is the point of creation within the torus. And so my conception of what's really going on here, which I uh, would love to get commentary back if anyone uh, agrees or disagrees with this concept, but to me the, the top of the pyramid is where all of the action and the fun uh, occurs because that's the vortex point of creation inside the torus, which creates the energy field that surrounds each and every pyramid. So in conclusion, when we use the pyramid geometry contained uh, in Dr. Golod's website, we arrive at a totally new understanding of Russian pyramid geometry. I believe that this geometry is based upon the phi spiral, the angle with the greatest passive torsion generating capability. It is also the precise phi scaling angle used in the creative process as demonstrated through the study of cosmometry. And finally, it is my belief that this unique fourth dimension phi spiral geometry is the driving force responsible for the amazing capability of Russian pyramids to create the highly documented health, agricultural, environmental, and materials benefits found in the Russian pyramid research. Be an educated consumer. If you're interested in achieving the results of, a Russian, of the Russian pyramid research, be sure that you are buying a pyramid that actually uses Dr. Golod's geometry. So to do that, you need to be sure uh, what you're looking for, and that's a slant angle of 76.345 degrees and an apex angle of 27.309. And finally, you know, need to know where to get it. And that's at onlypvcpyramids.com. We use Dr. Golod's geometry exclusively for our pyramids. I thank you for listening, and you have a great day.